right, so very bored Henry and a very bored Robert were watching Mr. Grumby, the next door neighbor, and his wife uh, kind of argue um, while they were trying to do some fancy grilling. Come on, Robert. Henry turned away from the rose bushes. He felt uncomfortable around Mrs. Grumby because he thought she didn't like him. Well, at least she didn't like Ribsy, and that was the same as not liking Henry. He didn't want to make her any more angry than she was already, although secretly he couldn't see why she minded Ribsy burying a bone in her flower garden once in a while. Henry tried standing on his hands to show Mrs. Grumby he wasn't paying any attention to what she was doing. Then he heard someone coming up his driveway. <gasps> it was his friend Beezus and her little sister Ramona, who lived in the next block on Clickatat Street. Beezus' real name was Beatrice, but Ramona called her Beezus, and so did everyone else. Beezus was carrying a baton, and Ramona was shine riding a shiny new tricycle. Let's see if we can see this here. Blair, Beatrice, a.k.a. Beezus, and Ramona. Whoa! yelled Ramona to her tricycle. Then she got off it and tied it to a bush with a jump rope. Hello, said Beezus. See my baton? The boys examined the metal rod, which was about two and a half feet long, with a rubber knob at each end. What are you going to do with it? asked Henry. Twirl it, said Beezus. I'll bet, scoffed Robert. I am too, said Beezus. I take lessons every Saturday. By June, I'll be good enough so I can twirl it in the Junior Rose Festival Parade. And someday, I'm going to be a drum majorette. June's only a couple months away, said Henry, wondering what he would do in the parade this year. Let's see you twirl it. Beezus held the baton over her head and started to turn it with her right hand. It slipped from her fingers and hit her on the head. Boying! shouted the two boys together. You keep quiet, said Beezus crossly. Let me try, said Henry. No, answered Beezus, whose feelings were hurt by the boys' laughter. Eh, I didn't want to anyway. Henry started across the yard. Come on, Robert, let's go climb the cherry tree. All right for you, Henry Huggins, shouted Beezus as the boys scrambled up through the branches. I'm going home. Come on, Ramona, untie your horse. But Ramona had seen Ribsy, and she began to pat him on the head. Ribsy groaned in his sleep and sat up to scratch. Suddenly, he was wide awake, <laughs> sniffing the air. Woof, said Ribsy. Henry could tell by the sound of the bark that Ribsy was excited about something. He peered out through the leaves of the cherry tree, but could see nothing unusual in his backyard. He saw Ribsy stand up, shake himself, and trot purposefully toward the Grumby's backyard, with Ramona running after him. Henry looked across the rose bushes and groaned at what he saw on a big platter beside the barbecue pit was a large piece of raw meat and the Grumbies were nowhere in sight. Here, Ribsy! Here, boy! called Henry frantically, but Ribsy did not stop. Catch him, Beezus! Ramona, who was trying to follow Ribsy through the rose bushes, shrieked. Hold still, directed Beezus, struggling with her little sister. I can't get you loose from all these thorns when you wiggle that way. Come on, we, we better get, be getting out of this tree here. Henry slipped and slid down the tree. I bet the rain washed off the doggy be gone. Eh, I guess we better, agreed Robert cheerfully. After all, Ribsy wasn't his dog. Henry hit the ground and tried to run through the rose bushes. Thorns clawed at his jeans and grabbed him fast. Here, Ribsy, he yelled. Here, Ribs, old boy. Ribsy jumped for the meat. The rose.
toast that Mr. Grumby was going to barbecue. With one desperate jerk, Henry tried to free himself from the roses, but the thorns dug deeper into his legs. And Ribsy <coughs> sank his teeth into the meat and pulled it to the ground. Mr. Grumby came through the back door with an armload of kindling wood for the barbecue. Hey, stop that dog, he yelled, dropping the wood on his toe. Ow, he groaned as he started toward Ribsy and stepped on Fluffy the cat's tail. Ow! An ear-splitting yowl brought Mrs. Grumby to the back porch. Fluffy, she cooed. Did the man step on the precious pussycat's tail? Ribsy paused to get a firmer grip on the roast. Ah, if that cat hasn't any more sense than the sleep on the steps, snapped Mr. Grumby. Hey, make that dog come back here. <gasps> oh my goodness, exclaimed Mrs. Grumby when she saw what had happened. Here, Ribsy, here, Ribsy. And that was just what Ribsy needed to make him start running. He didn't like Mrs. Grumby. He knew she sprinkled the doggy be gone on the bushes to keep him away. With one final yank and the sound of ripping cloth, Henry jerked away from the bushes. Tackle him, yelled Robert, who was still trying to untangle himself from the thorns. Henry flung himself at his dog, but Ribsy raced on. Henry picked himself up off the gr Grumby's driveway and ran after him. Around the Grumby's house he ran and on down Clickatat Street. He could hear Robert's and Mr. Grumby's feet pounding down the sidewalk after him. Ribsy! yelled Henry. Hey, come back here! shouted Robert. Stop, thief! bellowed Mr. Grumby, holding on to his tall white hat with one hand as he ran down the street. Doors and windows began to open. What's cooking, Grumby? Somebody yelled out. Henry heard his mother say, Oh, that dog. Henry! shouted Mr. Huggins. Go get him, Grumby! yelled the guy across the street. Mr. Grumby paused for a breath. Somebody head him off, he directed. Ribsy ran into the street. A car turned the corner. Ribsy! wailed Henry, afraid to look. Hey, look out! warned Robert. A car slammed on its brakes. Ribsy ran back to the sidewalk. If only Henry could put on a burst of speed and make a really good flying tackle. But no matter how fast he ran, Ribsy was just out of his reach. He glanced over his shoulder and saw that Mr. Grumby's face was red and he had lost his hat. Come here. Sir, panted Mr. Grumby. He wasn't used to running. Then his footsteps grew slower and slower until they stopped altogether. Henry ran on, with Robert close behind. Their friend Mary Jane came out of her house and started down the sidewalk toward them. If only she'd stop Ribsy. Catch him, yelled Henry. When Ribsy was only a few feet from Mary Jane, he dropped the meat on the sidewalk. Here was her chance. Get it, Mary Jane! Henry shouted, with almost all the breath he had left. Get the meat! Mary Jane stood staring at Ribsy. Hey, pick up the meat, you goof! yelled Robert. But still, Mary Jane did not move. Ribsy waited until Henry was almost within tackling distance before taking a firm grip on the roast and starting to run again. Mary Jane, <sighs> panted Henry, head him off. Mary Jane stepped aside and Ribsy ran on. Henry felt like he couldn't move another step. Well, why didn't you grab the meat, he demanded as he paused to catch his breath. Ah, oh, you could have caught him if you wanted to accused Robert. I couldn't either stop your dirty old dog, said Mary Jane. Can't you see I'm wearing my Sunday school dress? Oh, Mary Jane, you give me a headache, Henry glared at her. Mary Jane, you give me a pain.
You're a poet and don't know it, said Mary Jane, twirling around to show off her fancy and full skirt. Robert and Henry looked at each other. Girls! Robert clutched Henry's arm and pointed in the direction from which Ribsy had come. Look! A police dog, a fox terrier with a sort of a collar, were running down Clickatat Street towards Ribsy. Oh my goodness, now there'd be a dog fight and the roast beef would be torn to pieces and the two bigs would chew up Ribsy. They'd ch probably chew up the little fox terrier too. And Henry knew the lady who owned him was very particular about keeping him out of dog fights. Henry would be blamed because the big dogs bit the little dog and... Suddenly, Henry found he was too tired to do much of anything. He picked up a clod of dirt and threw it at the dogs as they passed him. Beat it, he said, but didn't bother to shout. He knew it was no use. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see what happens.